Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Byzantine Empire that is a part of the new DLC called the Sultan's Ascent. The Byzantine Empire play with mercenaries and a fifth olive oil resource. So we're going to talk about how that all works. The Byzantines are very interesting and very, very complex as well. So if you are not too much into complex civilizations, you'll find that this civilization will not be for you. Civilization here is centered around stone structures called cisterns. And the cisterns act as small Aachen chapels, meaning they give a gather raid bonus to villagers within this radius that is appearing on the screen right now. The radius increases with each level of cisterns. So if you have a level one cistern, you will increase the gather rate of villagers within the radius by 5%. And for every time you upgrade the cistern level, you will get another 5% gather rate. So if you combine cisterns, which you can do by building aqueducts between the cisterns, then you'll be able to get cistern level 2 and now we'll get 10% on this cistern. I've already made a little bit of a network here of cisterns. And so we'll actually get level 2 here. So you can see there's an output of 10%. And now we're going to get a level 3 cistern with three cisterns connected. The systems have these influences around them, and you can build buildings within them. The buildings, such as the barracks here, is a military production building. And as you can see here, we have three different toggles. We have the conscriptio, which is a military unit production rate increase. So that goes from level 1, 20% to level 5 with 100%. So the max level for the systems is level 5, and the max production boost here is 100%. It's a bit like the Ottoman blacksmiths with their increase in production. We can also toggle it to do an ability that increases our research rate and another one that decreases damage taken from buildings. So I'm just going to show how that works. It would be a good idea, for example, to have all production buildings around cisterns with the conscriptio. All research ability buildings such as the blacksmiths, the universities around the dialecticus. And we'll also want to have perhaps a keep or a tower within the Presidium system. So if we toggle that, we'll find that our tower now will switch over to the damage taken decrease. So if we build a keep here in the front or in the middle, for example, then we'll find that that keep is now much more durable, especially if we get to system level 5, where we have a 25% damage reduction. Moving on from systems, we're now going to talk about the military units that are in the Dark Age. The military units in the Dark Age are only the Limitane. This is the spearman equivalent for the Byzantine civilization, and they cost 80 food and 10 wood, whereas a normal spearman will cost 60 food and 20 wood. These have a special ability that's called Shield Wall, where you enter defensive stance. This will decrease your movement speed and attack speed by 25%, but it'll also decrease the range damage taken by 50%. So you sacrifice movement speed and attack speed, but then you take less damage. This is pretty good if you're pushing someone with a lot of range units. You can drop it again and they'll go back to their normal stats. As for the mills, we have a special type of farm that we can place around them. And that farm is called an olive grove. They cost 60 wood and the olive groves also generate olive oil for, for us. So the olive oil generated will be two olive oil and then three around something that's called the Grand Vinery. The Grand Vinery is the first landmark that we'll take a look at of two landmarks in the Feudal Age. The Feudal Age landmark here called the Grand Vinery increases berry and farm output of olive oil. So you can see there's a radius here and that radius will now increase the olive oil we get from berries. So where we would before get five olive oil from gathering from these berries, we now get eight and the farms will now give us three olive oil instead of two. The Imperial Hippodrome is a second age landmark that you can use to make more cavalry based compositions. This is a good landmark if you want to harass and perhaps go into more aggression or a second town center or potentially a tech up. The Imperial Hippodrome doesn't use olive oil compared to the other one that generates olive oil. So this is going to center your playstyle around a less mercenary focused style. You can produce horsemen in the second age, of course, and cataphracts in the third age, but the horsemen here are going to be specifically be used for raiding. You gain supply tickets from 
killing units with cavalry and then you can use an ability called triumph triumph consumes all supply points and it increases cavalry damage by 25 percent the movement speed by 10 percent and health generation by two percent so every supply point counts as 1.5 seconds so if you have 40 40 supply points you get a full minute of the supply point triumph ability duration so use this during a fight get out of the fight and heal up and then you can quickly go back and if you have the expilatorious ability you can then get a lot of gold and then potentially work your way towards more upgrades a castle age whatever you feel like whenever we build a building as the byzantines we will be generating stone. I'll put up a graphic right now on screen where you can see what that looks like. So every building generates a different amount of stone. A house will generate eight. A market will generate 32 stone. And it says in the description that every building, the larger it gets, the more stone it uh, generates. We have also access in the feudal age to some new buildings we have something called the mercenary house. And this is intact with our olive oil. We can then spend that olive oil, our fifth resource, on mercenaries. We will then pick a contract, the Eastern mercenary contract that gives us access to Keshiks, Gulams, and Tower Elephants. We can pick the Western mercenary contact, and that'll give us access to Longbowmen, Landsknechts, Streltsy, or we can get the Silk Road contract which awards javelin throwers camel riders or grenadiers these are respective ages so javelin throwers in the feudal age castle age is camel riders and the imperial age is grenadiers the one we're going to be picking here for us at the example will be the western mercenary contact and now we can produce a longbow for 500 olive oil this is a good way to build up new compositions that can counter different types of civilizations. So if we go for longbows and limits an A, we have an exclusive, almost English type of composition with spearmen longbows, but these spearmen are way better. So this will be a very strong composition. Now we have the longbows, but no, there's actually more to it. There's an upgrade here, so you upgrade veteran contracts, and this will also upgrade the veterancy of the units you already have out. So once we get to the castle age, these will then turn into veterancy units, and then we'll get the Lanschknechts unlocked. Next stage again in the Imperial, we'll get Streltsies. We can also build mercenary camps close to the trade posts, because every single trade post will award different types of units. So here it's Royal Knights and Horse Archers. We can now build we're all knights out of our mercenary camps. And in when we get the veteran contract, we can build the horse archer unit. Different types of units such as the archer range units and the stale units can also be produced as the Byzantines. You have your standard archer, and you have your standard horseman. And your standard horseman can be upgraded with an ability called the Expilatoris. And it increases damage versus workers by two. And the gold reward you'll then get from killing those workers will be 20 gold. You can also get the scout upgrade, which increases torch damage of nearby units by 25%. And so you could turn horsemen into almost fire lancer type units by sniping buildings and possibly landmarks too. From the barracks, we can upgrade our spearmen. The Byzantines have a quite unique upgrade that you can use whenever you are trying to build up your base. We always think about base layout when we place the Byzantines. We think about the cisterns, where to place our military and our research buildings. But we also could think about how we protect our uh, resources the best. You can always place a spearman unit on your wood line to protect your uh, villagers towards raids. But you can also go for the special upgrades by placing your houses out in the corners here and doing border settlements. You'll be able to see if there is a Mongol tower rush, if there are knights coming or any other type of military unit coming to harass your resources. So by getting this upgrade, you're not going to be able to see much further than you would. Uh, and you also save resources by not having to build towers on the sides. These will not be garrisonable, but this will award extra build speed for new houses and extra line of sight. So this is great. As you can see, it's almost the same if you compare the two. Uh, here's a tower and here's a house. So you can see that they are actually very, very similar. And you now don't have to build this. When you pick the Golden Horn landmark for H3, you can also now here, if you haven't, choose between the three contracts. You can choose the Eastern Mercenary contract, Western and Silk Road, just as before with the Mercenary Houses. But 
this, this building here will also produce the unlocked mercenary units for free. So if you have until now not played that much with olive oil and you've gone for a different style where you don't really go for that, maybe you've gone with the hippodrome and cavalry and then made a second TC, this is a great addition because now you can choose to go into the olive oil units. So you can say, okay, now I'm going to go into as I'm aging up. Uh, with the Lance Connect because I have a lot of spears that I have to deal with. And so now you can research the Lance Connect upgrade. And then once you're next age, it'll then upgrade uh, the Lance Connects through the mercenary houses. And you can now periodically produce Lance Connects and Longbows from this building. For your third age landmark choice, you have access to the Cistern of the First Hill. This acts as a normal system, but it also has a Pilgrim Flask ability, which regenerates your unit's health by 25 health per second for 10 seconds, so a total of 250 health. So, it works incredibly well with your Imperial Hippodrome. You can make some cavalry units, and then they might get damaged after having raided a bit. And so what you can do is, you can use this ability that is provided to the unit that has moved within the area of the Cistern of the First Hill, Click that and you get your health increased. But what will also happen is you can activate a certain ability here called Automatic Pilgrim Flask. This will make it so that when you're in a fight, the, the Automatic Pilgrim Flask will make it so that when your unit goes low health, they automatically drink and you do not need to be out of combat. Look at this boar. It's going to make our horseman incredibly low health now, but the horseman will actually activate the Pilgrim Flask on its own. You can do it manually, but look at this. It goes low health. There it is. It's gotten activated. And it's all the way back up to full health. It's incredibly effective and something that you can use to raid. And if you're in fights, in general, your units will perform better for longer. In the third age, you have access to new units as well. You have your standard limitsonade that can be upgraded onto H3. This is your Spearman unit, but you also have a Men at Arm type unit. And the Men at Arm type unit is called Varangian Guard. And these are some pretty good infantry units. They have a lot of armor. So five melee armor makes them really good against other Men at Arm composition and in general infantry compositions. They have a lot of damage as well. And they can use a certain ability called Berserking, where they lose four armor, but they then deal six extra damage for 30 seconds so you activate that and all of a sudden they have 200 axes instead so these guys are great if you want to deal a lot of damage really quick and they scale better than other men at arms unit would you also have access to crossbows in the third age standard crossbow unit this will be very useful you have of course your mercenary contract and then from the siege workshop you have springles mangonels counterweight trebuchets chiro siphon and bombards in h4 the special unit here is an, a ram unit called the Cherosiphon. It costs 100 gold more than a normal ram, but they can spew Greek fire. So when you're attacking something, you can use this unit to ram someone, but you can also use the fire ability to make a pool of fire around the building that you're attacking that will damage enemy units that are standing in that fire. So this is a really good unit to use when you're pushing, but a little bit more expensive. So watch out for that when you go for uh, ramps with Byzantines. This also incentivizes Byzantines to play a little bit more for a third age or fourth age style, maybe even with a second TC, because many of their units depend on having a, a good economy up and running. So you need your cisterns, you need your olive oil to come through, and your ramps are much more expensive than normal ramps. So going for those in feudal are definitely going to be more consequential to you if you lose them again. The Cataphracts is the unique cavalry knight unit for the Byzantines. The Cataphracts are slower and they cost more, but they have a lot more health. They have 360 health, whereas a normal knight in Castle Age will have 230. So when you upgrade these, they become incredibly strong with biology, for example. They move slower at 1.5 tiles per second, whereas a normal knight will move at 1.625 tiles per second. Therefore, they also have a special ability here that you can use. So instead of charging normally, what you'll do is you'll use the trample ability to charge through enemy units. So you can click on the ground and then you can deal damage by charging through the different units. So this is a really good way to cover a lot of area and to get to siege units that are standing behind body blockers. So an incredibly strong and very, very healthy unit. 
in the castle age, you also get access to your monastery. And it'll be important to choose whether or not you put your relics inside of your monastery or your grand binary. Because if you put it inside the grand binary, you get more oil. But if you want to go for more gold heavy units in the end of a match where you might have five relics and a lot of gold coming in, then maybe you do not need oil because you got the oil from the farms anyways. So think about where you put your relics, if it's inside the grand binary or the monastery. Another thing is defensive emplacements. We talked about before how to use the Presidium, but you also have to think about towers. The towers can be upgraded with mangonel emplacements, but mangonel emplacements are also more expensive and they're better suited for clumps of units. So if you're getting raided a lot, maybe arrow slits is better. Maybe you should wait for the cannon emplacement, but the mangonel emplacement will always be good. It'll always do more damage than an arrow slit will do. You also have the mangonel emplacement on your keep. And as we talked about before with the cisterns, try to keep Presidium on frontline keeps and towers like this because it'll make them far harder to kill. Talking of layouts as well, we might as well cover it too. When you are building your aqueducts, I always recommend that you build your production buildings before you build your aqueducts. Because what will happen is if you build your aqueducts first, you might place them in a fashion where it's not as good for building placement later. So you might place barracks like this, but as you can see, I can't really place any barracks in this entire area here. But if I build my aqueducts after I've placed all my buildings, I can fit many more buildings together. But look at this. The aqueducts fit right in. They can snap in between buildings and not take up tile space. So try to build your production buildings first, then build your aqueducts. Because then you are going to delay, of course, your assistance um, total level for a little bit. But what will happen is you'll have more effective space and less area to defend. And if you're on a map where you don't have a lot of sp space, such as Altai, you will find that this way of playing is better. When choosing your last landmark, the Imperial Age landmark, you can choose between the Palatine School and the Foreign Engineering Company. The Foreign Engineering Company is an incredibly strong landmark where you can use olive oil to purchase special siege units. There is not a contract for the siege units that you purchase here. There is a set in stone contract. So if you want to choose Nesta Bees, the Hui Hui Pao, the Mongol long range uh, trebuchet, or the cannons, you can do so. So you have these three siege units, and they're incredibly strong. And they are good for different purposes as well. You have the Royal Cannons for firepower, the Nesta Bees to deal with crowd control. So you might have a lot of trash units from your opponent. These can be incredibly powerful to spam. And you have the Hui Pao. They also have different costs. So you'll find that the super long range trebuchet is the most expensive one. And then you have the Royal Cannon for 900 olive oil, the Nesta Bees for only 600 olive oil. So there's not a lot of difference between getting five longbows or getting the Nesta Bees. The last landmark we have to look at is the Palatine School, another H4 landmark. And what it does is whenever you train Limitane, Varangian Guards, Cataphracts, or the Cherosophons, the Rams, there's a 30% chance to also spawn one of this landmark. So let's take a look at how that works. You make a lot of Cataphracts here, you can see they also get spawned over here. You make Limitane, they will also get spawned over here. The same with the Siege Units and the Varangian Guard. So, periodically, they will spawn, which is really, really nice if you need to make a lot of units quickly and you're in a lot of fights in the Imperial Age. And you can then resupply your main army very, very quickly. Both of these endgame landmarks, and in general, all of the landmarks of the Byzantine Empire, are very good. And they're all something you can consider depending on your play style and how you, in general, like to play Byzantines. I hope you liked this introduction to the Byzantine Empire and how to play them. They're a very complicated Civ, but if you get to know them, they are actually super fun to play. And they have so many intricacies that make them very, very interesting. And they have so much utility, so I guess they will have a, a good time against most civilizations as well. If you like the video, leave a comment, like and subscribe, and of course questions. And I guess there will be a lot of them. Ask them down in the uh, comment section below. I'll be providing build orders for both the Japanese and the Byzantine Empire. And uh, they will be coming out after this walkthrough. So you can check those out as well as you are going to learn those civs as well. See you guys in the next one.